If you follow the channel, you might recognize this as the used Voxolabs Aquila I got from AliExpress for like 55 bucks. Now, in that video, I mentioned that this little guy was destined to be my dual extrusion printer and, well, mission accomplished. Uh, if you want to see how, stay tuned. So let's talk about dual extrusion a little bit. Uh, there are two common types of dual extrusion hot ends, the two in, two out variety in which each extruder has its own filament path from the spool all the way to the nozzle. Uh, and then there's a two in, one out variety in which both extruders push filament through a single shared nozzle. And there are benefits and drawbacks to each. A two in, two out is basically just two hot ends smashed together. Uh, each filament path has an independent heater block and nozzle and, and thus can have wildly different filaments, which may be required for things like water soluble supports or PETG alongside PLA where the temps don't match. Now this is the E3D Chimera, or at least a clone. As you can see, there are two filament channels two heater blocks and two nozzles. It's basically two complete hot ends with only one radiator and fan. The downside to a hot end like this is that the nozzles need to be precisely adjusted to your bed level. Otherwise, the lower nozzle may push around and peel up filament extruded by the higher one. E3D makes this adjustment pretty easy as instead of screwing a heat break into a radiator like on their V6 hot ends, the heat breaks are held into the radiator with little grub screws. Uh, you can loosen the grub screws, lower the bed all the way, then tighten the grub screws with a piece of paper under the nozzles and they should be level assuming your bed is fairly level. Uh, it's pretty easy and it works pretty well, uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's definitely not foolproof uh, and even well-adjusted nozzles can struggle with stringy, curly, or, or otherwise difficult filaments. Now, once you have the nozzles level, it's just a matter of adjusting retraction to keep the inactive nozzle from, from oozing filament all over the place or possibly adding an ooze shield to, to catch some of that ooze as the, the non-printing head re-enters the printing space. On the other hand, E3D also sells a two-in, one-out hot End called the Cyclops. With a two in one out hot end, the two filament channels feed into a single heater block and merge into one nozzle. This means all of your balancing and oozing problems go away since there's only one nozzle to worry about. However, this introduces some other issues. First, since both filaments share a heater block, they both will have to print with the same temperature, and that'll limit the filament combinations that you can use to only materials with similar melting temperatures. Now, second, you have to purge the prior color from the mixing channel, uh, which means that you'll need to add a purge tower to your prints and you're going to waste a, a little bit of filament with each color change. And finally, there are some reports of more frequent jamming with two and one out hot ends, likely due to a mix of overly aggressive retraction uh, and a, a longer curved filament path in the heater block. So at the end of the day, I chose the flexibility of a two in, two out Chimera, uh, but your needs may be different. The good thing is that both the Chimera and the Cyclops use the same mounting hole pattern in similar dimensions. So this design should work for either. Uh, and in fact, the only difference between the Chimera and the Cyclops are the heater blocks. And also, while I went with the E3D style dual hot ends, uh, mainly because I already owned it, uh, you can get Creality style hot ends that should be even easier to mount to the Aquila or an Ender V3. Or if you really wanted to go bonkers, there are more advanced and expensive solutions like the auto splicing pallets or uh, like crazy multi-tool and tool swapping gantries. Now, the first problem to tackle is that the control board that ships with the Aquila only has four stepper drivers, one for each of the three axes and then a single extruder. Uh, in order to use a second extruder, you'll need to replace this printer's control board, which will be the most complicated part of this project. I happen to have an SKR 1.4 lying around, uh, so that's what I'm using. I originally tried to, to mount that new control board up under the casing where the old board was located. However, the Fistex steppers that I'm using have really high heat sinks uh, and they would bump into the 2020 extrusions on the bottom side of the printer. So I relocated the control board out to the side of the printer and designed this compact enclosure. Now, relocating the board wasn't 
too difficult. I did have to pull the motor and sensor cables that run down through this little hole in the bottom of the casing. Uh, all you have to do is loosen these two front screws and then you can kind of bend the sheet metal up a little bit and slide those wires out the front. Uh, and since we moved the board from the bottom to the sides, uh, many of the cables are now kind of routed under the extrusions and up the side of the enclosure. Uh, I did leave some, some slots and some gaps to make that routing pretty simple. Now, all of the OEM wires were long enough to reach this new board location, except for the ZN stop, which I had to extend uh, three inches or so. Now, and fortunately, it seems that Voxel Labs is using a pretty unique LCD module that is not compatible with standard control boards and firmwares. Uh, it sounds like you can get this thing working if you attach it directly to the GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi that's running a custom built version of Clipper with some mods, uh, but that's a bit more effort than I'm willing to go through for an LCD that I'll uh, pretty much never use. However, I did modify the Big Plants print system uh, rep rep budget LCD enclosure to mount to the side of the 2040 extrusions. Uh, so if you absolutely must have an LCD, I do have a solution for you. I also added a Raspberry Pi. This is a 3B uh, and I'm running uh, Clipper and Octoprint on this little machine. Now I highly recommend getting the printer working with the new controller board and all of the stock extruder setup. Uh, getting the new board installed and configured for the current axes and sensors and extruder is like 80% of the work of this project and I would do that against a known working setup. So obviously we will need a second stepper motor to drive the second extruder. Uh, out of the box, the extruder is mounted on this, this wide carriage bracket. Uh, while they tried to keep it as close to the Z threaded rod as possible, I still don't like adding weight to this Z axis uh, given that it's only driven by a single stepper. Uh, and I definitely wasn't going to hang a second motor onto it. I relocated both extruder motors to the top of the printer frame. The motor mounts themselves are just the basic untabbed stepper mounts from the Big Plans printer system, and you can pretty much use any Bowden mount that isn't too bulky. You will have to unsheath the, the motor wires to run them to the top of the frame. Uh, I made this cute little wire hanger to kind of keep everything tidy and aligned. I did not have to extend the OEM Bowden tube. Uh, it's just about the perfect length for mounting the extruder at the top of the frame. Uh, just had to cut a second one for the second extruder. Now I'm using BMG clones uh, and I mounted one BMG facing the front and the other facing the rear so that I could move them as close together as possible. Uh, alternatively, you can buy left hand and right hand uh, BMGs, uh, which could nestle close together on the same side of the extrusion if you wanted to. I also had to design a spool holder for the second roll of filament. My first design mimicked the uh, the existing spool holder. Uh, however, this, uh, this single arm solution was kind of wobbly, so so it was replaced with a far more sturdy dual arm design. And finally, since we now have two spools and two motors sitting atop the printer, uh, I had added some aluminum 2040 corners to help stiffen everything up a little bit. So now mounting the hot end itself was pretty easy. Uh, I initially designed this super simple little adapter that just kind of you know matches the, the Creality mounting holes to the E3D mounting holes. Uh, but since the Camara radiator has a big beefy chunk of aluminum on the back that gets pretty warm, uh, I modified the design with some standoffs to help dissipate the heat. Uh, the simpler version of the design would get warm enough to soften PLA, so, uh, so maybe still print this part in PETG even with the standoffs, or alternatively maybe stack some washers or nuts between the mount and the radiator. Now, the most annoying part of the Chimera is aligning the nozzles. Uh, the grub screws on older clones like this are located on the back of the radiator, so while the mounting adapter doesn't get in the way at all, the X carriage plate covers the left heat brake screws. So what I do is loosen the right heat brake, level the bed to the left nozzle, then adjust the right to match. You can do all of that without removing anything from the carriage. Uh, newer versions of the Chimera and the Cyclops relocate the grub screws from the back to the sides of the radiator, so they should be even easier to adjust. Now the part cooling fan design utilizes the mounting screws of the radiator fan, however it's modular, so if you want to swap out fans or design for a different part cooling fan, it should be pretty easy to do without removing the radiator fan entirely. 
Uh, you could also mount a, a bed sensor or, or something else to the other side with uh, just a little bit of effort. Now I opted for a full size 50 millimeter blower part fan uh, as those are more common and effective than the smaller blower that came with the Aquila. That OEM part fan is also loud as hell and, and replacing that part along with the extruder fan makes this printer substantially more quiet. Now, as I mentioned, I'm running Clipper. If you've never added a second extruder in Clipper, it's pretty easy. Uh, you basically just add an extruder one section with all of the same stuff as the original extruder. Uh, by default, Clipper doesn't recognize the T0 and T1 extruder switch commands, so you'll have to add macros for them to your config as well. And basically, other than that, all the magic happens in the slicer. I'll include my printer config below, but keep in mind I'm using a mix of driver types because that's what I had lying around. Uh, you'll definitely want to review that configuration before you try to use it, even if you are replacing with the same SKR 1.4 board. Now, unfortunately, Cura doesn't seem to let you modify manufacturer profiles, at least I couldn't figure out how. Uh, so I created a new printer profile from scratch, copied over everything from the Ender 3 V2, uh, only added a second extruder. I'm using an X offset of 18 millimeters between the two nozzles. It sounds like the OG Chimera and Cyclops use this 18 millimeter distance, while the newer plus versions, uh, they use 20 millimeters between the two nozzles. So you might wanna give this a quick measure before you attempt your first print. Now, besides setting up your printer config for the two extruders, you might want to be a little more aggressive in your retraction settings since there's more time for each of the nozzles to ooze while they're not printing, uh, and maybe look into like an ooze shield. Uh, I'm not gonna go in depth on working with two color prints in Cura. That's an entire video into itself, uh, but once you've got these basics figured out, the rest is just kind of tweaking and tuning. Even without spending a, a lot of time uh, tweaking yet, I'm getting really great prints. These simple multicolor calibration cubes uh, with a couple of different patterns, uh, they look great. Um, this cool little multicolor traffic cone looks fantastic. I designed this, uh, this cool little uh, Big Plans badge for printers using the system. Uh, here's a medallion that's two color prints. This could actually be done with just a filament swap, but makes it much easier with the dual color printer. Finally, uh, the, the, the dual color tree frog, these are kind of dual extrusion torture tests uh, since there are so many fine color swaps on every layer. But you know, apart from you know, a little bit of over extrusion and a couple of zits, he came out fantastic. My first prints with PETG at 230 degrees and PLA at 190 uh, resulted in the PTFE liner of the heater block throat failing. Uh, I chalked this up to a poor quality and cheap clone. I have some all metal replacements on the way, uh, but until then I'm pretty pleased with the capabilities of the dual extrusion setup. Now all of the designs I built for this setup are linked below in the description as well as links to the controller boards, uh, some steppers, tubes, whatnot. Uh, if you implement this dual extrusion setup on your Aquila or your Ender 3 V2, would love to hear about it and please send pics or it didn't happen. So thanks for staying with me through this one. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like my other videos, go ahead and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.